All right, guys, I just finished up watching Winter Soldier, and let's just say that I hated this movie until I liked it. So go try to figure that one out. Okay, so from what I can tell, 30% of this movie was fight scenes, and another 30% of this movie was introducing characters because they introduced a whole heck a lot of characters. And then another 30% of this movie was just crap that made no sense whatsoever. And then at the very end, the last 10% of it was stuff that made sense and was fun. So we start out with just this extended fight scene that doesn't really tell us anything until the very end of it. And this movie is two and a half hours long. I didn't know I was sitting down to Citizen Kane when I watched this movie and I didn't need it. <laughs> I'm, like I'm truly stressed after watching this movie and not because I'm like all immersed in the fight scenes, but because I'm just so sick and tired of watching people punch people until the last 10 minutes. And we'll get to that. So the first two hours was just full of just crap. Let's just introduce character after character after character after character. And then let's, uh, I don't know. Okay, let's, let's just. <sighs> I am not pleased with the energy we have created in this studio. <sighs> now at the end of that horribly long fight scene at the very beginning of the movie that lasts 13 minutes of my life, um, there is finally something that makes sense with it because the girl with the force field powers, I don't know her name and I don't care to know it, she tries to protect Captain America. Captain America is protected by this big force field, which she then flies up into the air and it explodes into this building and 13 Wakandans are killed in it. Now, just shortly after this, um, they show uh, all the other times when the Avengers have killed like citizens in these movies. And those were all on a much, much larger scale. Stuff that like basically villains had put in action. They were trying to protect them from, I, I mean, like building after building after building are like thrown into the sky, disintegrated. You can't tell me there aren't people that were affected by that. Probably more than 13 of them. But for some reason, this movie goes all in on the 13. And because these 13 people were killed, they uh, the governments all start to come together and they basically have like a UN meeting where they say like the, the Avengers can no longer operate as a team or at least not autonomously. They have to go through the governments, which they also point out that the governments do have problems also because governments are run by agendas also. And yeah, absolutely they are. So I agree with that. So I, I get the tension between both sides. I don't understand why the uh, big deal about just 13 people um, being killed when they have clearly killed many, many, many more people. And it, that even comes into it later. Um, anyway, let's, let's keep talking about this. This is going to be a long review because the freaking movie is two and a half hours long. So then we see this Russian guy who comes in and he kills someone from Hydra while he's looking for a manuscript from, um, that's, that like affects Bucky Barnes, which they did set up a little bit at the very beginning of the movie. Um, when they say these words, then Bucky Barnes turns evil, essentially. But you don't really understand that for the majority of the movie until, well, <laughs> I guess, uh, you don't understand it for what should be a normal length of a movie. <laughs> <laughs> About an hour in, you you start to understand what the issue is, and then it affects the movie more later. So then Tony Stark decides that, no, the governments do need to regulate all this stuff, which in every movie so far, Tony Stark has said, no, the governments don't need to regulate anything, and they shouldn't regulate anything. So it's a complete character change that, first of all, on the face of it, I just cannot buy. There's this, like scene where Tony's talking about memory capture, basically, where he can insert himself into his memories. And it's the last day that both his mother and his father were alive and when they could be together as a family because they were killed later on that evening. And then he gives a whole bunch of money away because essentially he has a guilty conscience and 
he meets a mother of someone who died. And I think it's part of the reason why Tony decides that the government does need to oversee their activity because he's put a face to one of the names that he killed in like Crossfire, essentially. But that person is just one more person that we meet who then we never see this mother again. She doesn't play any more bearing in the story herself, uh, kind of her memory and her impact does, but nothing else. When then we were also meeting all of these other characters. Some of them are superheroes. Some of them are people who died um, as a result of uh, the Avengers uh, killing people, killing killing bad guys, you know, like, so there's, there's all these people in this movie and it introduces a new person. I'm not kidding. Every five minutes, there's a new person introduced. And some of them, of course, are people that we already know, but then there are so many new ones along the way that we, that we get introduced to and remembering all the people and remembering all these subsequent storylines that do merge together in the end, but they don't make any sense up until about two hours into this movie. So you better have a pretty freaking strong stamina for you to deal with this movie for two hours while you have no idea who anybody is and or what their impact on this story is going to be. And then all of a sudden you will get a bit of a reward, but holy crap, it takes forever. Along the way also, we find out that Agent Carter just died. Who the hell cares? I do not care. I've never met Agent Carter. We've we've seen her in the movies like the like the first part of these movies, we saw Agent Carter and she was young and we've never, I don't think we've ever seen her as an old woman, maybe one time. And if we did, it played such a low bearing on the amount of things that I need to remember about these movies that I couldn't care less about it. Tell me in the comments if I'm wrong. Maybe we've met her before, but I just literally do not care. Then we saw Captain America in this extremely drawn out five or six minute funeral scene that I couldn't give less of a damn about. It's just, it is so annoying how they they continue to bring in all of these characters and yet then we're also supposed to care that Agent Carter dies and literally like three scenes later, actually less than that, like two scenes later, um, Captain America is flirting with Agent Carter's great niece. So this creepy 100 year old man in a fit man's body is now hitting on this little girl who is like 20 years old. You know, I mean, comparatively, that's like a little girl. It is so creepy. I can't, I can't even explain to you how much it's creepy. And then like three scenes later, he's kissing her and making out with her in front of his friends. Awesome. Good for you, 100-year-old Captain America. That sounds great. I am just, ugh. It's, it skewed me out so bad. I can't deal with this movie. I really can't. And I was already so annoyed because they're throwing characters at you like, like passing a football. Like, you should remember this one. Boop, here you go. Here's another one. Boop. Here you go. Remember that one. Boop. Here's another one. Oh, let's go again. Here's another one. Woo! You want to you want to find out about Spider-Man? Here we go. Yay! Here's Paul Rudd. Awesome. Oh my word. Stop it. I don't care about all of these lines that I need to remember about. I'm already ADHD enough. This ADD brain is going to explode. So the big issue with most of this movie, I, I get it that we want to see the Avengers fighting, but we've seen them having like a polite disagreement many, many times. Um, these movies have not been without conflict. There's always some sort of conflict. And we've always seen them somewhat work it out together. I can see some of the effort that they have because they try to throw in a few jokes um, while they're fighting and try to make it just a little bit lighthearted. Um, but because the government has decided that they can no longer fight, some of them want to fight and some of them do not. And the whole way through, you kind of view it as they all don't want the government telling them when they can or cannot fight. 
they all don't want the government telling them when they can or cannot fight. And yet, you're supposed to believe that they all have such passion that they're willing to fight each other over the government instead of uniting together and maybe fighting against government forces, which I would think they could easily do. It doesn't make sense. When you're looking at this movie, you don't feel that kind of conflict. You don't feel like this is earned. Instead, it's it feels very much like fan service. It's like Batman versus Superman. We want to see these factions fighting against each other, so let's try to give them a reason to fight. I could not care less about any kind of fight scene unless there's motivation to it. If there's character motivation to it, then I love to watch it. It's fascinating. It's it's like a dance. You're seeing one person kind of get the upper hand and what happens at that point, and then they lose it, and now what happens? Who gets the upper hand? Those are all interesting dynamics when it's done well, and it is done well at the end. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. But it's not done well when these characters are just fighting against each other, back and forth, back and forth, uh, for no real apparent or earned reason. Um, these, these characters just don't have strong enough motivation to fight against each other. Then we also get this B-plot with uh, Pepper and Tony Stark. There's already so much with, with Tony Stark that we need to know. They don't need to throw in Pepper. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, just literally just say, Pepper went on a vacation, and that's why she can't be here today. That's fine. Write her out of the script for no reason, but you don't need to add this additional drama of I was continuing to make suits. Honestly, we already know that. Maybe he's in denial even that she just went on a vacation, but really she left him. That's fine if it plays additional uh, an additional role in the future that they've, you know, not, not gotten a divorce, but they're separated or they're on a break or whatever they are. That'd be fine, but there's just, there's nothing in here that that solidifies this for me. And that was a very unnecessary thing for uh, us to know about Tony Stark. We don't need to understand. So we find out that the Russian guy is in cahoots with someone else and they have a power outage that happens in a coordinated attack. Um, that is just, I mean, it's, it's like completely perfect. And again, there's so much to remember. This, this might as well be a Michael Bay movie. There's just, it's just all action and like nothing of substance. Um, it's, it's just fight, 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 shaky cam, fight, 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 shaky cam. And that's all you're seeing through most of it until then it's like, oh, by the way, here's B plot and C plot and D plot and F plot over here. And you also need to remember A plot because A plot's the real important thing, but all these other plots are all going to conjoin together. So if you don't know them, you're going to be real confused through this movie. So it doesn't make sense because it's just unnecessary. And like I said, it's, it's Michael Bay-like. It's very Michael Bay-like. Then we find out that there are all of these other Winter Soldiers. And again, this takes forever for us to talk about Winter Soldiers. I never saw other Winter Soldiers come in to, to play with this. There's apparently tons of other people that have escaped from prison. This was like a 10-minute scene of us just talking about something that's it's not even a plot cul-de-sac. What would I even call this? It's it's just pointless. That's what it is. This could have easily been, you know, like part A of a separate movie that would have made it feel much better and easier to watch because you we didn't need to know most of this other stuff. They could have waited for a second movie for us to talk about Agent Carter's death and actually maybe add some gravitas to that so that we actually could feel for Captain America that he lost someone uh, for this romance with Captain America with with Agent Carter's niece. We don't need to know anything about that. They kissed one time and it affected the plot in absolutely no way whatsoever. I don't care if it's going to affect the next movie. Who cares? It, it, they could easily have put that in to a shorter movie at the beginning. These are all just completely pointless scenes that make no sense in the grand scheme of this movie because... I don't know, did they just want to fill it out? They wanted to create a longer movie with, with nothing that makes sense? I'll go see a long movie. I love Titanic. I love The Lord of the Rings. I'll watch a long movie as long as the long movie continues to move forward in a plot that makes sense without just additional filler and romances that make... Uh, 
<laughs> that make no difference to the to the future plot. It it's just it blows my mind how many of these movies have been incredibly good, and now this movie just was oh, pretty terrible until the very end. There was finally something funny during the the long fight scene at the end when Ant-Man went into Iron Man's suit. He falls out of the suit and then he starts running and he's saying, on my cue, everyone attack. But you see him running across these stair steps and he's just running away, running away, and then it backs out from him and you see how slow he's moving. That was a really good shot. Um, it's things like that that have traditionally made this franchise really fun for me to watch. But li little jokes like that and sarcasm. But this didn't have the joy of the other movies. And it didn't have the sense of the other movies either. It just wasn't making sense. Um, because they were trying to cram too many things in all at one time. Anyway, they finally get to the Russian guy's lair. And at this point, everything comes together. Um... The Russian guy at the very beginning of the movie had gotten a video of uh, Iron Man's parents having died, which we already got the exposition of that shown to us earlier. And then we find out that Bucky Barnes, when he didn't know what he was doing, had killed Iron Man's parents. I started to have a very strong feeling um, because at that point, you finally start to identify with these characters for the first time in this movie. So it was much better at that point for me to understand why he was upset, um, what had happened to him. He, at, at this point, you, you really feel that Iron Man is angry and he doesn't care. Captain America even tries to uh, speak some sense into Iron Man and it doesn't matter. Iron Man is mad and he just wants to go get vengeance because he, he, because Bucky Barnes killed his mom. Doesn't matter if he knew he was doing it. Doesn't matter if he had control over himself. He just was mad. And at that point, I could feel it. I could feel these characters. So finally, the punches were motivated. They finally meant something. You could feel what he was wanting to do. And you understood both sides. You understood that Captain America was saying, he's my friend. But you also understood that Iron Man was saying, yeah, you used to be mine also. Uh, you get that vitriol. You understand the anger. And at that point, I loved it. If this whole movie would have just been about that plot, if we could have condensed it into, you know, three different plots, um, that, that like A plot, B plot, and C plot of his parents dying and... Um, that impact that that had on Captain America, this would have been a wholly different movie that I would have probably really loved. But instead, they decided to turn it into something that has so many layers to it. This is actually the third time I have tried to watch this movie. I also tried to watch it two other times and tried and failed each of those times because it was just so difficult for me to understand all these things that were happening. Each time I made it about an hour and a half, uh, which I mean, for me, I'm, I review Disney movies mostly. So that makes sense. By the way, you should watch my Disney movie reviews. They're right up here or down here in the description. Go hang out with me and let's talk Disney movies together. 90% of this movie was just pointless stuff. It was action scenes that were not motivated or it was characters that were not developed or just situations that made no sense whatsoever. But 10% of it at the end really felt motivated and had a good payoff to it. Of course, probably if you're more of a comic book fan, um, you will enjoy this movie more than I did. Uh, of course you will. I mean, because you're probably just going to know. It's it's like the, the characters from Star Wars. We just want to know that they're connected and all that kind of stuff. And there is fan service. So I, I imagine that's stuff that... Uh, comic book fans really, really love. But if you are just a movie fan like me and you don't love the comics, this one's probably not one that you're going to love. I'm not sure if it sets up a lot of things that are going to be strong for the next movies. I'm excited to watch them. So uh, don't leave any spoilers down in the comments for my own personal gain, but I love to read your comments. So please comment down below what you think about this movie. And uh, do you think that it's 
not really one of the best ones. Or uh, maybe you, you, I already have some friends on Facebook that are mad at me about this because <laughs> I just couldn't contain it to myself. So <laughs> I, I don't know. Tell me what, maybe you're mad. Maybe you hate this. So <laughs> also like, subscribe and share or dislike if you really hated my, my take on this. Dislike it. I, I love your engagement and I love to hear what you guys have to say. So um, I will talk to you all later. Bye.